What's going on boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my classroom, take a seat, make yourselves at home. Okay, as you can see, we are going to be covering task four in this video and five and six. Okay, so three questions in one video for today. Um, please take a look at the whiteboard, copy the note taking diagram that I made. That's the one in red. And I already took notes on the reading passage, which is now on the screen. Now, today's topic is OCAM's razor. Okay, that's the pronunciation, OCAM's razor. As I've said before, the most efficient, the fastest way to find the definition of the topic is to first look for the topic word within the reading passage. So let's skim through it and look. Okay, it's in the third, it's in the uh, third line for me. It's in the second sentence, I believe. And it's also in the fourth line. Okay, so it says, OCAM's razor proposes that when a person is faced with a problem, he should eliminate everything unnecessary to solve it. There it is. So OCAM's razor, which, which proposes that a person should eliminate everything unnecessary to solve a problem. That's the definition. If you took notes on something like this, which has no grammar mistakes and no misunderstandings, you don't even have to read the rest, okay? All right, now let's move on to the lecture. Listen to a lecture about the same topic and take notes. Let me give you an example of the dangers of thinking too much. Here's a situation. You wake up and look out your window to see the tree in front of your house is burning. After extinguishing the fire, you start thinking about how it started. You arrive at two conclusions. First, someone went to your house and set the tree on fire. Okay, let's run down this line of reasoning. Why did you do it? Does someone dislike you that much? I hope not. <laughs> also, only the top half of the tree caught fire. So the person must have climbed up the tree and started the fire, or else climbed up a ladder to start the fire at the top of the tree. And how did he manage to get away with no one seeing him on that busy street you live on? Now you arrive at a second conclusion. There was a thunderstorm with lots of lightning last night. Lightning must have struck the tree and started the fire. It's as simple as that. Now, which of these propositions is more logical? I'd say it's the simplest one. The first has too many variables and is highly unlikely. When you get down to it, the simplest solution tends also to be the best one. Okay. All right, now. In this lecture, the professor gave one example, and this example was about a tree on tree that's on fire, okay? So our beginning sentence is, in the lecture, the professor elaborated on a specific example of a tree that's on fire to explain the concept of Ockham's razor. That's the beginning sentence. Now the ending sentence is, to sum up, this was a perfect example of Ockham's razor, which proposes that a person should eliminate everything unnecessary to solve a problem. So as you can see, as soon as you're actually as soon as you realize what the professor is going to explain in the lecture, which in this case, the professor said in the beginning, here's an example or something like that. So as soon as you heard that, you should be able to organize not only the beginning sentence, but also the ending sentence. Okay. So your first and last impressions should be flawless. All right. Now let's look over the details. Uh, for the first part, I wrote down tree in front of house burning arrive at two conclusions. First, someone set on fire. But think about many things like why, why did he do it? How did he set the tree on fire and how did he get away? So it's complicating because he, the person has to think of many different um, components. Okay, now the second part, uh, the second conclusion is that lightning must have struck the tree and started the fire because there was a thunderstorm last night. So a uh, simplest solution is the best. All right, now that we know what I took notes on, let's listen to my sample response. If you're having a hard time taking notes, please try to practice by, by becoming more familiar with, by getting used to writing down words uh, more efficiently, either by writing down the first few letters or, or just ignoring the vowels. And uh, if you're able to take notes efficiently but have a hard time connecting them efficiently, then uh, yeah, it would be very important for you guys to pause the video, copy my notes uh, that's on the whiteboard, and listen to my sample response really carefully and, uh, and, and listen to how I weaved the sentences together, okay? All right, here's my sample. 
The professor elaborated on a specific example of a tree that's on fire to explain the concept of Occam's razor. To begin with, if a person sees that a tree in front of his house is burning, he can arrive at two different conclusions. The first conclusion is that someone set the tree on fire. However, in this situation, the person must think about many things, such as why did someone do this, how did someone set the tree on fire, and how did he get away with no one seeing him. In addition to this, the second conclusion is that lightning must have struck the tree and started the fire because there was a thunderstorm last night. Subsequently, Occam's razor says that the simplest solution is often the best because it is not complicating. To sum up, this was a perfect example of Occam's razor, which proposes that a person should eliminate everything unnecessary in order to solve a problem, given by the professor and the lecturer. Okay, now, I have something to confess. confess. This wasn't really a good sample response because I said a lot of unnecessary things, I feel like. So over here, I said, um, uh, subsequently, Ocam's razor claims that the simplest solution is often the best because it is not complicating. You don't, I didn't have to say because it is not complicating. Those are stuff that I don't want you to do because they create more risk. Luckily, well, not luckily, but since it's me, I was able to add um, a little more zest in this response without having to make my fluency suffer, but uh, I would never recommend you to do that because it's risky. It creates a lot of um, contingencies that may or may not affect you negatively, but the chance that it may harm your speaking performance is something that we're trying to avoid at all costs, okay? All right, so this was the sample response for Ocam's razor. Please, <laughs> I think my dog just farted right now. Anyways, yeah, this was my sample response for task four. Let's move on to task five. Okay, now I'm gonna start the task five conversation in just a moment. So what I really want you to do is pause the video and copy the note-taking diagram for task five that's on the whiteboard, okay? Pause it now and do it. All right, here's the conversation. Listen to a conversation between a professor and a student. Professor Edgers, I've got a problem and need some advice. Okay, let me know what's going on. As you know, I'm double majoring, so I've got a lot more work than most other students. Well, I've uh, got to submit two separate papers in different classes by next week, and that's going to be too much work for me to do in that short of a period of time. One of those papers is for my literature class, right? <coughs> yes, ma'am. And the other is in history. Well, why don't you start writing your literature paper tonight instead of waiting until the last minute? Then you could work on your other paper uh, next week. I'd love to do that, but I have lots of reading homework in another class, so I've got to do that first. In that case, have you considered using the same topic for both of your papers? Then you could just write one paper and turn it into both classes. I wouldn't mind. Hmm. I'd have to ask for Professor Goldberg's opinion before doing that, and he's liable to dislike that idea. I heard another student ask him the same thing once, and he refused to allow her to do that. Okay. All right, now let's look at the board. The man has a problem because he needs to submit two papers by next week, but it's too much work. The first solution is starting his literature paper tonight, and the second solution is using the same topic for both papers. Now, take a look at this guy over here. Um, the downside of the second solution is that the man's professor is liable to dislike his using the same topic, okay? So his professor may not even accept his essay if it's, if it's pretty much the same version as um, his paper for another, a different class. My dog just barked. Okay, so since this is so serious, we're gonna pick the first solution, okay? All right, so we don't need, we do not need this, okay? Just ignore this. All right, now the upside of our solution is that he will be able to work on his other paper next week. The downside of the second solution is that, as I said, his professor is liable to dislike his using the same topic. And the downside of our solution is uh, the man already has lots of reading homework to do. But over here, we're going to be able to say because grades are very crucial for university students since this is all about school assignments, okay? All right, now, since we know what we're going to say for this response, let's listen to my sample response. The man is in between a rock and a hard place because he has to submit two different papers by next week, but it's way too much work. 
Fortunately, he can choose from two possible solutions, which are starting his literature paper tonight or using the same topic for both of his papers. If I were in the man's shoes, I would personally prefer the first solution. To start with, this solution would be much better for his issue at hand because he will be able to work on his other paper next week. On the other hand, since the man's professor is liable to dislike his using the same topic, it would be impractical to choose the other possible solution. Although the man already has lots of reading homework to do tonight, starting his literature paper tonight would still be better. Because grades are obviously very crucial for university students, as they can affect their future positively or negatively. Needless to say, from where I stand, the first solution is the much better choice for these reasons. Okay, so um, I had about 17 seconds left when I looked at the clock, so I had to say everything up until for these reasons. Um, always don't forget to uh, mark the solution that you preferred because, once again, this is a silly mistake that happens more often than I want, than anyone wants. Um, students pick the first solution, but they forget when they're speaking and they mistakenly say, I would honestly prefer, I would personally prefer the second solution, which is, oh boy, that's a mistake that you want to avoid, okay? All right, now, since we're done with task five, let's move on to task six. All right, look at the board, copy the note-taking diagram for task six, and get ready to take notes. Here's the lecture. Sure about an academic subject. We've discussed a lot of different aspects about marketing, but there's one thing that's the most important of all. You need to know this, so let me tell you what it is. A successful marketer will ensure that his product grabs people's attention, which will then convince people to purchase that product. I think I can best explain this by providing a couple of examples. You've all probably gone shopping for cereal at the local supermarket. There are so many colorful boxes, you just think that they'd all stand out, wouldn't you? Well, one cereal company once decided to market the same product in two different ways to determine which one was better. The first way it did that was by designing a colorful cereal box that was filled with the most amazing pictures and descriptions of its product. It was a complete masterpiece. Unfortunately, when it went on the store's shelves, it didn't look any different from the dozens of other cereal boxes that were right next to it. So, shoppers failed to notice it. Accordingly, it failed to make significant sales. However, the company also marketed the same cereal in a plain white box that simply had the word cereal written across the front of it in big black letters. While you might think that this was a nonsensical design, the box's plainness made it stand out from the other cereal boxes. People noticed it, and they started purchasing that cereal because they had noticed it. The company found that its sales of the cereal in the plain box began increasing rapidly. That box, while simple, was an example of successful marketing. Okay. All right, <clears throat> now, uh, the professor talked about, sorry. <laughs> the professor talked about one cereal company. It's chaotic right now. Okay, so one cereal company that marketed the same product in two different ways. Now, what we're going to do for this response is get rid of this to begin with here, and we're going to say it here, okay? So after your beginning sentence, you're just going to take a break and then move right along to one cereal company and then say to begin with over here, okay? All right, so the beginning sentence and ending sentence is how successful marketers grab people's attention. I'm starting to sweat because it's a little hot in here. Don't mind me. All right, now let's look at the listening's uh, notes. One cereal company decided to market the same product in two different ways. To begin with, the company designed a colorful cereal box with many descriptions, so it became a masterpiece. However, this box didn't look different from other cereal boxes, so it did not make many sales. Um, in addition to this, or furthermore, uh, this company also made a plain white cereal box. Uh, on the other hand, surprisingly, its plainness made the box stand out. Hence, many consumers noticed it and began purchasing it. Needless to say, the sales of this box increased rapidly, and it is a good example of successful marketing. All right, this is a lot of information, guys. You don't have to say this much information, trust me. 
um, and you got you, you'll be able to judge that based on um, my speaking tempo and how much how many seconds I have left on the clock okay all right but I'm gonna try my best to speak very steadily okay all right so my sample the professor gave a lecture about how successful marketers grab people's attention. One cereal company decided to market the same product in two different ways. To begin with, this company designed a colorful cereal box with many descriptions, so it became a masterpiece. However, this box did not look different from the other cereal boxes in stores, so it did not make many sales. Furthermore, this cereal company also made a plain white cereal box. On the other hand, surprisingly, the box's plainness made it stand out. So many consumers noticed it and began purchasing it. Needless to say, the sales of this cereal box increased rapidly, and it is a good example of successful marketing. In summation, this was how successful marketers grabbed people's attention, which was illustrated by one cereal company given by the professor in the lecture. Okay. I had about 13 or maybe even 12 seconds left, I think. But for this, ex for this lecture, since there was only one example, I decided to say which was illustrated by after my um, ending statement ended. Okay, boys and girls, um, I'd like to end today's video on this note. Uh, speaking questions are difficult because of one reason, and this is the same reason that speaking, uh, the speaking section is a little bit easier and maybe even more, uh, maybe even more manageable than the other sections. Okay, so the reason is too much freedom. Since you have too much freedom for all of the speaking questions, and that's because there is no right way to talk. As long as you're fluent, you're going to get a good grade, and as long as you're fluent, you're going to be deemed a good speaker. Okay, so that's why there's too much freedom, and. Well, simply because there is no right answer. There are billions of ways to respond to any particular question. So that's why it becomes a little, a little complex and it's, it's too, it becomes kind of abstract and difficult to comprehend. Um, on the other hand, since there is a lot of freedom, as long as you're able to find a way to maintain great fluency, have decent pronunciation, um, and have great intonation, you know, uh, be able to speak naturally with enough energy and uh and passion i guess so that you know you give off a good impression with your speech as long as you're able to do that you're going to get a good grade you're going to get a perfect grade okay all right if you have any questions on about the uh sample responses for the task four five and six questions we went over today please leave them in the comment section below if you have any questions about my services contact me and uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next one which is going to be focusing on integrated writing this is my eraser for this board by the way <laughs> okay anyways i'll see you guys in the next one